So while we were at CERT, we were given a task to essentially incorporate 360 video somehow into our next project. So the cool part about working with 360 and being tasked with something like this was also trying to structure a narrative around that uh, integration between 360 and 2D. And how could you write a narrative that was uh, not hindered by the use of 360 technology, but actually amplified? That's when we uh, stumbled upon the idea of a paintbrush that warps space and time. And we thought that was a nice organic way to present 360 in a, uh, in a 2D frame narrative context. We found uh, a good way to use it in a way that clearly showed that you could not do this kind of effect or, or these kind of shots with conventional cameras. So obviously there were some uh, very obvious hurdles that we had to cross when dealing with 360 video, being that it's not usually in a conventional 2D frame and you kind of have all this visual information that you wouldn't normally have. Thankfully, GoPro has uh, plugins for softwares that we're already familiar with, like Premiere and After Effects. So the tools are there, and it just sort of became about how exactly do we use them to fit our, our storytelling needs. Whether it was the fight scene, or using the spinning 360 shot for the portal transition, or even when Matt first picks up the brush and sort of uh, walks around his room and you kind of get this uh, interesting cosmic POV from inside the brush, the tools all responded exactly the way we wanted them to. The footage also came with its own small set of limitations mm. when trying to blend it in with the conventional footage that we shot with our 2D camera. The challenge then became to sort of find the middle ground between those two cameras so that the, the film still looked somewhat consistent and people would still believe that it's all part of the same narrative. Simply stemming from the 360 side of things, it was really interesting to try to shoot uh, a conventional short given this new technology that we were kind of handed with. Because framing up a shot, looking at what the shot is, we actually were able to use uh, GoPro's app that allows us to see what the camera's seeing um, in real time and act as a viewfinder for us. But the other thing that you don't really think about when you're doing conventional filmmaking is what's in the way or what's not in the shot as opposed to what is. So you, there, there's no hiding behind anything, or at least there's no hiding behind a frame because everything is your frame. I think one of the advantages that uh, 360 video served us while in production and then subsequently in post-production is that we were confident that no matter what the shots really looked like, we could still pull uh, a good frame out of all the information that we captured because of the uh, innate flexibility of, of being able to reframe uh, the yaw pitch and the roll. I kind of view 360 as where we might be, you know, at the very early stages or at the cusp of something so much more awesome and amazing, and, but right now it's about figuring out what does 360 offer us, maybe not now, but maybe five years from now or ten years from now, and, and through the span of innovation, where can it take us?